Eric, welcome to be on the SAP Vlog series here today with us. Great Thanks to for be taking here. the time. Amazing. Pleasure. So we are looking at your 2021 AMR piece on organizational paradox. It's already one of your heavily cited papers. And in this piece, you basically, together with Tobias Hahn from ESADE, you develop a paradox approach to paradox. So you look at two competing views on paradoxes, one the social constructivist view and the other the inherent, say, positivist view. And then you look at three dimensions, the latency, the salience and persistence. And you integrate these two competing perspectives into a third perspective using quantum theory. You apply this social business example. So social businesses would be characterized by both their need to create value by money making and create value by social uh, social purpose fulfillment. And you would actually integrate these perspectives such that um, in terms of latency, the inherent potential of paradox is, is factually existent, but indeterminate that paradox is concretely reenacted in this specific context. So that's regarding the salience and that enactment is repeated in similar social material contexts regarding persistence. And so my question, of course, is, is that an adequate summary? What did I miss? Yeah, I think that's a good summary, um, Tobias. I mean, just to give a little bit more context as well for readers of the paper, the debate between social constructivism and positivism is long ranging in management science and in organizational studies, of course. And in Wendy Smith's and Marion Lewis's 2011 paper on paradox theory, which is looking at specifically at paradoxical tensions in organizations, they say that, well, it's both and, it's both socially constructed and inherent. And this has been the underlying assumption for the last decade in paradox scholarship. But we ask the question, well, what does it mean to be both socially constructed and inherent? And in particular, what is the relationship between these two things? How do they interact? Under what conditions or to what extent uh, does it mean that uh, paradoxes are uh, both socially constructed and inherent? And so this is what this paper is trying to do, to advance theory, to think about this concept of both and in new ways so that uh, future scholars and scholarship can begin to do empirical analysis to advance this theoretical perspective and contribution. So that's essentially what the motivation behind our paper was. Yeah. Wonderful, very interesting. I think we get to the broad implications of your paper also in this interview. Um, however, my next question would be on the central contribution, which would be the quantum theory approach. So why is quantum theory applicable for this kind of you know, puzzle? So we use quantum theory as a analogy or a metaphor. It's inspiring the theorizing. We're not saying that it's an actual quantum phenomena. It's just saying that it's, it's inspiring. And the reason it is inspiring is because quantum theory, which comes from the field of physics, which we can appreciate is an inherently positivistic field, you know, the world of gravity and waves and wavelengths in a Newtonian world is fixed and very descriptive of the environment. Quantum theory goes beyond that. And it suggests that the world is not just as we see it, but also how we perceive it. It's not just as it is, but it's also how it's perceived. And this was the main insight of Niels Bohr uh, in his development of quantum theory, uh, which was a tension with traditional Newtonian and Einsteinian physics. And it became very philosophical. And so that debate that we want to have between the socially constructed and the inherent view is a very rich one in the field of physics through the quantum debates that happened uh, in the Copenhagen views of, of uh, quantum theory amongst others. And so we take that same generative discussion to organizational studies and paradox theory in particular. So it's very relevant because it, it, it encompasses both ontologies and it plays out the intellectual space in a very uh, comparable and interesting way. Right, could you elaborate a bit more on how quantum theory applies specifically uh, in this specific context? Yeah, absolutely. And what I would say here is that uh, like all different fields and disciplines, it, it depends on certain jargon or terminology uh, that needs a fair amount of detail, uh, which is in the paper, uh, to at least the level we need it. But let me give you two examples of, of, um, of what I mean by this. Um, 
you know, already in some of um, paradox theory and in some of the work of Matthew Sheep and others in organizational studies, people have begun to think about tensions, not just in the paradoxical sense, the kind of different poles, but also the various intertwining of these tensions. You know, uh, Matthew Sheep's paper talks about knots, for example. And in quantum theory, they talk about the notion of entanglement. The entanglement basically relating to the way in which one action creates uh, counterposing actions. You know, in a traditional physics sense, an action creates an equal and opposite action. But quantum theory offers more complex entanglements. And so we use the concept of entanglement to suggest how a particular material underlying condition might predispose or increase the tendency or the possibility of uh, one course of action arising compared to another. So yes, in a socially constructed world, you know, perception is reality, but perhaps the underlying material conditions make certain perceptions more likely or more possible or more frequent than others. This is what the notion of entanglement begins to introduce. And so what this brings into the discourse of paradox theory, social, um, so social ethnography, uh, is the notion of possibility, of tendency, of one thing being more possible than the other. And it moves us to this state between just the instance and the macro structure to this kind of meso space of things being more or less possible, more or less likely, more or less entwined, more or less entangled. So this is where the space that we're beginning to get to. And you know, there is a new rich set of conceptualizing that needs to happen, my view, in that kind of uh, meso level. And this paper should be a good launch pad for um, social theorists and uh, ethnographers who want to begin to interrogate these new concepts of possibility uh, contingent, you know, beyond contingency to some sort of um, uh, possibilistic, probabilistic, uh, entangled existence. Yeah. Wonderful. This is so interesting. So you touched on this tensions and paradoxes. They are somehow related, but they are also distinct from each other. Could you spare a few words on what's their relationship specifically? Yeah, I think of tensions as the aggregate bucket um, of things. You know, there are lots and lots of different types of tensions. And paradox is a subset of tensions. Paradoxes relate to, um, you know, the kind of um, opposing but inherently intertwined set of tensions. So, you know, there are some tensions that don't have those characteristics of opposing but interconnected. But paradox defines those particular elements, uh, if that makes sense. And so um, we're specifically focused on paradoxes because it's the nature of that interconnection or the kind of interdependence that I think actually activates the interesting phenomena uh, of entanglement, you know, or the probabilistic. You know, it's because when something happens here, it activates perhaps an opposing tension somewhere else in the organization or it renders it more salient in some various ways because there is an inherent connection here. In, in physics, in quantum physics terms, this notion is talked about as superposition. And this is where I talk about different jargon. But the inherent idea is that, you know, the um, for-profit and social good have an underlying connectedness. Um, you know, exploration and exploitation have an underlying connectedness. And so when we explore one pole, it activates the possibility of the other pole. And the nature of that relationship in the middle between the inherent and socially constructed needs to be studied. Um, and the, the way it operates in the organization is worthy of study in, in advancing paradox theories going forward. And this is what I mean at the outset by saying that simply saying that socially constructed and inherent are both true doesn't actually get us into the real meat in the sandwich, which is the processes, the entanglements, the interdependencies that are actually happening between these alternate poles as we take a processual view of organizational um, theory. Wonderful. That's so enlightening. So, I mean, basically, so you are, you are bringing us a big step forward on this way of integrating a purely social constructivist view and a purely positivist perspective. You're adding this meso perspective. Um, you had likelihood and a probabilistic perspective on how things might be in R. But you do this in the specific context of paradox and tensions, paradoxical tensions. So to what degree would you say do your findings point or, yeah, go beyond or might be a you know platform to go beyond um the specific paradoxes and tensions and maybe enlighten also um more fundamental debates between positivist and interpretivist scholars 
Yeah, I mean, I always think that's a possibility. Um, you know, when you're making any theoretical contribution, it needs to be tightly linked to a primary theory, primary literature. And this is clearly a paradox theory for us in this paper. And then the secondary literature, which pr provides the inspiration is the quantum theory lens on paradox theory. So I don't want to claim in this paper that we go beyond paradox theory. Um, and paradox theory is a rich area for theorizing. And there's a lot of uh, good theoretical and empirical work. So I very much encourage junior and obviously uh, senior uh, scholars to continue to contribute into this field. So let me say that quantum theory makes the contribution into, into paradox. And I think there are more ideas in paradox theory to elaborate. But as to this broader question beyond paradox theory into organizational the theory more broadly, and of course my own area, and as per this blog, is more linked into practice and process-based approaches and strategy uh, as the phenomena of interest in particular. I do think that um, more broadly, the opportunity to explore what happens beyond the moment, momentary instance, beyond the kind of practice and understand how the practice sits within the broader process is a longstanding interest in strategies, practice literature in organizational theory literature. And we've described you know, some elements of that um, sub practice and process. But I do think bringing to bear um, some of the more unpredictable, unexpected, fragile um, 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 interactions within this is very fruitful uh, opportunity for further theory and empirics. And I don't mean to say by that, that quantum is the answer to this. I just think that going to the kind of relationship between you know, the inherent and socially constructed, yes, is one area to think about this, think about how particular inherent attributes increase the tendencies for certain social phenomena to come to bear and and the nature of those interactions true it can um, you know can be useful but also we can think about different practices beyond the ones that we foreground like discursive practices and verbal practices and think about how other peripheral practices shape or inform those discursive practices and therefore make them more easy to be understood or interpreted some of my work as you will be aware also looks at visual analysis, uh, for example, uh, embodied analysis. And we can argue that the bodies and the visuals work in tandem with the words to make some things more or less foregrounded or appropriate. And I think this allows for a more, uh, you know, um, uh, kind of variegated view, if you will, of process studies. And again, now at the moment, we are just thinking a little bit about, for example, extending on this notion of visual and embodied some of the affective, um, A-F-F-E-C-T, effects, so emotional uh, tendencies, for example, that get elicited through uh, various practices, because sometimes the emotions can outlive or go beyond just the mechanical interactions that happen. And so the underlying point here, I think, is that, yes, we have conversations. Yes, we have words. Yes, we do movements, and these things are consequential in the moment, but they also have wider routines, um, they also have uh, repetition over longer periods of time. And I think understanding how the, the, sh the, sh the short and the long interact is very, very important. You know, in paradox theory, bring it back to this paper, there was this notion in uh, the 2011 uh, paper, which was a, you know, a fundamental paper in paradox theory from uh, Smith and Lewis, that we have individuals interact around a paradoxical tension and if they manage to respond and accept these tensions, then organizational stability as sustainability can be taken for granted for all time. Right. Is this really realistic? What happens if the leaders leave? What happens if the context changes? What happens if certain emotions come to the fore or the ground? This notion of equilibrium, I think, needs to be contested. We move now to a world beyond equilibrium, beyond stability, you know, to highly unstable, highly unpredictable radically uncertain uh, world, set of organizations, set of interactions. So I actually think the general point here to us to yours is, if we can begin to study the nature of uncertainty, unpredictability, chaos in organizational theory, I think this is a very fruitful area uh, for further discussion, especially as we now have more open strategic forms, we have uh, more decentralized organizations, more polycentric sources of power. I actually think this is now uh, where there's great potential in organizational process theory and theorizing. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I'm coming from this field of entrepreneurship. And so you're basically also contributing to this idea of how to reduce uncertainty to, to manage risk. So having this probabilistic notion 
how do entrepreneurs use their practices and with what kind of likelihood maybe do certain practices have certain effects and how do their effects have you know implications beyond the very moment beyond the very specific um manifestation exactly and i was actually having a conversation with tobias Hahn, my co-author in this paper and sebastian rash yesterday on another piece that we are working on and so you know we take these traditional notions of stability and change these dualisms and we probe further i mean is all stability just the same are there different types of stability are there different qualities to the nature of stability in organizations or are there variances in the nature or the volatility of change i do think being able to bring more nuance into these phenomena, these social practices in the, the uh, micro to the macro and the meso and in between, I think presents a lot of opportunity. And we're always looking for opportunity for theoretical contribution in our papers to hit the top journals. That's always a necessary precondition. So therefore we need to have a curiosity about where is the gaps and why are those gaps meaningful? You know, it's not just about gap filling, empirical uh, um, um, gaps, it's about theoretical gaps, underlying phenomena that is missing. And that's why I think I opened up in this conversation the notion, as I say, of chaos, uncertainty, unpredictability, entanglement. These, I think, are quite rich concepts, conceptual for conceptual theorizing and, and a theoretical contribution, not just empirical contribution to future studies. Yep. And this, this all sits as potential for uh, future scholars who want to take our paper but potentially use that as just a stepping stone to the work they're doing to begin to make their own contribution in future work. Yeah. That's very insightful, very interesting. Eric, I think we are already nearing the end of our interview. Um, many thanks for this discussion. I can just recommend reading this paper and uh, thanks to you to Australia. Thank you. Keep safe. <laughs>